Well, hello there. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. My name is Joel and this is a stable life. So good to have you here on this extremely humid and warm Saturday. You're probably pretty intrigued by the title. Maybe you're also intrigued by the thumbnail. <laughs> Yeah, we've got some new arrivals coming to the stable today, guys. It's gonna be an exciting one. Before we get into all of that though, we've got feeding to take care of. So let's fill the barn up. Honey is already in and eating. You guys are well aware, we're still actively treating her leg. And if you've been thinking, Joel, you've been treating her leg forever. Why are you still working on that leg? Well, she is 32, so. And in case you're curious, horses average lifespan is into their mid 20s. So she's quite old, so. <laughs> It's gonna take her a while. Then we have our other things going on. Of course, next up is Buster and Rocky. Let's get them fed. Hey boys, that gap's getting bigger and bigger. Everywhere you walk, there's more work to do. Gotta love it. Yeah, good morning. There you go. Happy num num time for Buster and Rocky. Looking good, looking good. Then we've got over here, Mr. Poe, who's walking so, so much better. Hey, Poe. Poe had an abscess that had just popped yesterday. Yay! So that means that we can finally get him out of the rehabilitation pasture and on up to his stall. Look at that, that is such good progress. Oh, he's doing so much better. His owners will be so happy to know that he's doing well. He's been in that pasture for five, six days now waiting for that abscess to pop. When they have an abscess, one of the best things you can do for them is help them to walk, even though they don't want to walk. Them walking actually pop forces that abscess to pop and then pushes all of that bad stuff out of there. So long as you keep it disinfected, they'll be on the mend pretty quickly. Interestingly enough, it's been very, very dry. So it's actually kind of interesting that he even developed one. And we kind of have to thank Poe because mom and I think that we have figured out why certain horses get abscesses and others don't, and the time of year that seems to be lining up with when they are getting abscesses. So it's kind of more pieces to the puzzle. I'll talk about that later on. Now let's get the rest of the horses in. I just have to say, look at how good the pastures look. The camera doesn't really do a good job of long distance viewing, but I mean, wow. We'll see it more at the big field. Let's get the middle field in. Whew, I got sweat pouring off me already. It's 90. 3% humidity right now. 93% humidity and the temperature is 80 with a real feel of 86. Woo! Man, it's a scorcher. There you go, buddy. Right on in. Hey, Rebel. Hey, George. Hey, Champ. Is that everybody? Man, that middle field knows what they're doing. Look at that. Let's close some doors. Champ, to your stall. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you. So obedient. So at the stable, we have 24 horses and two miniature donkeys, with Poncho here with 25 horses and two miniature donkeys. And Leia. Can't forget Leia. She's an integral part of the stable. Speaking of, if you may be wondering, she's not here. Her breed really minds the heat, especially once you get into the 90s. She does amazingly well in the cold, so that means that she doesn't do so good in the heat. She minds it, and because she is 12 years old, we leave her at home in the AC. She takes naps, she rests. It's good all around. All right, Declan. Spitfire, stop pushing the gate towards me. Thank you. Good morning, Declan. Good morning, Danny. Good morning, Spitfire. Hello, Suede, good to see you. Archer, good to see you. Casino, I got you, buddy. There you go. Sriracha, good to see you. Hello, Tucker. Hello, Weather. Hello, Skywalker. Hello, Obi. Hello, Gavin. Hello, Samson. Ah. <laughs> Good. And last but not least, we have Argento. That's all of them. There we go. Now we can take in that beautiful pasture. Look at that. That's awesome. Horse pasture mode. Looks good. Today we got to take hay out. And then my next target is going to be working on the cow pasture. Veggie boys have been super busy with vegging. <laughs> so we'll see what we can do to help them out with that side. All right, close some doors time. Yesterday, the tractor was used for mowing. If you haven't had the opportunity to check out that video, I recommend you do so. Was a good one. Got a lot done yesterday. But we need to change the tractor over to a round bale moving machine. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it feels like Florida outside. Straight up, just humid, 
hot. I'm just like soaked from my own sweat and it's it's only 10 a.m. I'm all for vacationing in Florida, but I'd never live there. Too hot. I couldn't I couldn't take care of horses or cows or farm in Florida. And for those that do, I don't know how you do it. Come on. I think it just needs one swift kick. Here it is. The swift kick. Ha! <laughs> Didn't work. There we go. Like I said, one swift kick. There we go. Unhook. We could pick up them bales, huh? Because today I'm gonna be feeding four. Just goes to tell you how little rain we've been getting. Okay. Pretty nifty, huh? Bale spike for round bale. Bale spike for round bale, believe it or not. Hitch is long enough for the wagon on the back, and that's what I put all the net wrap and stuff in. Works good, man. All right, I'm getting another bottle of water because I feel like I have already sweated out about 16 fluid ounces of water. I'm gonna need some more. That just looks awesome. Now, what's funny is every single year that I mow that, the entire time I'm mowing it, all I can think about is how I need a bigger brush hog. Because the one that I have behind me is only 60 inches wide. This tractor can handle one far bigger than that. So my mind is always thinking about getting a bigger rotary chopper. But then once I'm done using the rotary chopper, I don't think about it again until the next time I need to use it. It's hot out. We have 11 round bales left from 2023. Today we're gonna to be getting rid of four. Boop, 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 boop. Meaning that we only have seven round bales to go, which is exciting. So our original forecast was that we would run out of these wrap bales by August. The new forecast, which was done last week, was that we will run out of these bales by mid-July, but we are not getting any rain right now, which is okay. I mean, we got a really great first cutting. We do need rain, just not like torrential downpours but that seems to be what we're getting is torrential downpours and then nothing, and then torrential downpours and then nothing. So, you know, I'll take the moisture. I recognize some moisture is better than no moisture, but that being said, I'm thinking that we might be out of these maybe the first week of July at this point, which is fine. We've got absolutely plenty of hay. As you guys know, we've got 21 round bales that I know of that we need to feed because they're either not wrapped or they have holes in them. Gotta feed those anyway, right? And if the rain turns back on and we start getting a good growing season again, which it tends to do in July, then the horses will go back to eating a lot of grass and we don't have to feed hay as much. I'm not too stressed about it this year because we got a lot of hay. Hard work pays off, you know what I mean? Yeah, you do. That's why you're watching the channel. You're a fan of hard work. Or you're just awesome. Probably both though. Time seems to be moving on pretty quick today. It is already 11.19 a.m. We still haven't even gotten daily care taken care of yet, but we do have all of the hay out for the horses. As you can see, the area around is getting pretty heavy. The grass is getting mowed off because uh, the clients will take the horses out here to graze a little bit when they're spending time with them. But the weeds, now well, they need to be string trimmed. We'll see what we can get done today. But with the horses in, it's a good time for me to go back in there and then drag everything up. You guys have seen me fix this driveway a lot. And that's because it's a constant work in progress. But I think what happened here was a lot of the rocks got drugged too far and then put in this ditch here. And so the water was able to kind of roll right over it. So I'm gonna back these rocks up and over and pull everything up and remake the swale. When you get an inch and a half of rain in half an hour, that's so much water that it wasn't able to handle it. But well, uh, fix it, do daily care, get the horses out, and then we gotta get that ring drug because all that rain packed that footing down pretty hard and footing needs to get fluffed up so that the clients have good footing for their horses while they're practicing for riding, showing, any odd thing, you never know. Okay, driveway is fixed, which means I can finally close the gate. One of our clients actually showed up and is helping me with daily care. So 
That's awesome. So, Mila, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Let's get this gate closed and I'll show you guys quick how the driveway looks. Look at that, isn't it pretty? I think it's pretty. <laughs> and today's a big day. Today, Poe is gonna be back out in the big field with his buddies after a few days of him being off. So, yeah, this looks so much better. And up here, looks so much better. There we go, look at that. Look at that, boom. I'll take quite a lot of water to get over that now. There's always grass growing in here. Oh, no, don't go in there. Don't go in the culvert. <laughs> good, good, good. Let's roll, let's get these horses out. So welcome to the afternoon, which is where we have arrived at the point where I can now introduce you to one of our two new arrivals. We have a new horse here. Now, before we introduce the new horse, which is very exciting, I just want to give you guys some backstory. For those that haven't, I recommend checking out the video from field to bale, my first time baling hay, as that video will introduce the fact that Poncho is no longer at our stable. By the way, Mila is George's owner. She has been helping me with feeding all day. Thank you again, Mila, appreciate it. Which means that we did have one open stall. Now, the owner that owned Poncho and that rented this stall was somebody who was at our stable for a very long time, always loved having her here. So we told her to take as long as she needed and we were gonna leave the stall open for the month of June and actually possibly even further, however long she needed for the grieving process. Well, through that week, she had decided that she wanted to actually get another horse. And for some of you, you probably don't really understand it, whereas others probably get it immediately. I know some people, when they lose a pet, it's very hard for them to kind of go without having that pet, and so they end up getting a new one, whether it's a dog, cat, horse also applies, especially if it's in your blood, which for Poncho's owner, it definitely is. So she had contacted us and let us know that she was interested in getting a horse. We told her, not a problem. Since she's been a very faithful client, the stall was here should she want it. She ended up wanting it, and so she got a new horse. So now I'd love to introduce you guys to the newest horse at Sunny Knoll Stables, Ebony Rose. My goodness. Wow, she's gorgeous. Hi, Ebony. Hey, my name's Joel. I'm gonna be the one that's gonna be taking care of you, along with two others. She's already met my mom. You'll meet Gavin soon. I'm here to bring you on in and introduce you to everybody. Wow, gorgeous horse. So she is a Frasian Tennessee Walker Cross. Hey, Ebony, it's okay. Yeah, you're all right. Gorgeous horse. Hello. Yes, hello, beautiful. Oh, hello. Ooh. Hello. Oh yeah, I can see it. You're beautiful. Would you like to come with me? Yeah, it's okay. We only went about one week at 24 horses. We're back up to 25 already, so <laughs> gorgeous horse. And in case you're curious, she is 14 years old. So she's going to have a nice long life out of her, which is great. And we're, we're very happy for Poncho's owner. We know that no horse will be able to replace Poncho, but at the same point in time, they definitely fill a special place in everyone's heart. Right, Ebony? Let's say hello to everybody. Yeah. All right, let's take her into her stall. Gorgeous, she is 16 hands. Nice big horse, but thankfully she's crossed with the Tennessee Walker, otherwise we'd have another huge horse like Tucker and Weather here. <laughs> yeah, come on, Ebony. There you go, girl, right in. There we go. She's gotta get her bearings. She's only been here for a few hours. So she's gonna learn her surroundings and get to meet all the horses because I think this is her first feeding. So she's gonna get to see all the horses coming in now. All right, well, let's get all the horses in. And every time we get a new horse, I set the camera up, show you guys how it looks when all the new horses are coming by. big field.
All right, well, so I think she's definitely doing good. Got a couple of good clips of how she reacted to the horses coming in, but the way it's gonna be right now is Honey is in the left run and Ebony will be in a lower ring until she is acclimated. So that takes us from four mares to five mares. So we have 20 geldings and five mares at the stable now. It's kind of crazy. All of them are eating. We're gonna get them all turned back out. Then we have a few other things that we need to get started on doing before we wrap up the day. And I have one more new animal to introduce you guys to that's gonna be part of the Sunny Doll family. So stay tuned. Well, while they're all eating, I figured we might as well get started on dragging the arena. This gate has not been used for horse purposes for a long time. That used to be the main entrance when we had horse shows here. Yeah, that's right, we used to have horse shows here. Isn't that kind of something? So we're just gonna button everything up so that this is ready for us to drag it. Then we're gonna drag it, so that's done. And then we'll turn out, and then I'm gonna work on mowing all this grass that's around. It's all gotten pretty tall and crazy. One thing after another, right? I'm just glad we got those pastures mowed, guys. That was a big thing. I'll have to check, but it's kind of rare for us to have that pasture fully mowed in June. Usually we get that fully mowed by August. So that tells you we're, we're getting things done sooner and faster, which is good. Also, in case you're curious, temperature is 92 with a real feel of 99 outside. She was a little fiery when we let her out, but I think she's doing well. I'm just gonna lead her to two things. I have to do these. They probably already did them, but I wanna make sure. I gotta show her where water is and where food is, just so that she's able to know where they're at. Since it's mostly already taken care of, this shouldn't be revelation to her, but if it isn't, then I can sleep peacefully at night knowing that I did. All right, here's water. Here's water. Okay, see, look. You guys know the expression, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. It is very true. Now she knows that there is cold water over here. She's not interested at all. She's more interested in all the other horses. Okay, and I'm gonna take her over and show her where the food is, which is currently Argento stall. See, hey, food, 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 see? Not interested, okay. Either way, everybody at the barn is really excited and happy good news so exciting let's continue on with the day it is 5 20 p.m i still got a mow grass in the stable and at my house yet and i got to show you the next edition Welcome 
to our home. I know this is the first time that we're welcoming you guys into our house. Nice to have you. So, Megan, would you like to tell us what our second addition is and the newest addition to our family? We got a kitten. Yes, we did. You want to see her? Oh, it's too dark in there. There we go. There's your newest addition to the family. This is Piper. We took her out of her happy spot. And so we literally just got her today. So her and Megan are still getting acquainted. <laughs> hey Piper, you wanna say hello to everybody? <laughs> For reference, that is the name that she came with. We're not too certain if that is going to be her name Subject to change, and I'll update you accordingly. But, yes. Megan has been wanting a cat for quite a long time, so now we have a cat. So now we are taking care of 25 horses, two miniature donkeys, a dog, and a cat. Think that's enough? No. <laughs> I think Piper likes the horses. Anyways, before we conclude, let's head on over to our question of the day. To date, our most recent video is from Field the Bale, my first time baling hay. All right, the question of the day from Nani D1573 is why does Buster and Rocky get so little feed? Is the hay most of their daily nutritional value? That grain that they're on is packed with nutrition. So those huge horses, some of them only get a quarter of a scoop to what the donkeys are getting per day. It's based on their diet. As for Buster and Rocky, they aren't doing much exercise other than just chilling around in that run. <laughs> so most of their nutrition does come from the hay and the grass that they eat. And then the small remainder that is needed comes from their grain. But because they're miniature, their food is miniature too. So even though it doesn't look like it's a lot of grain, keep in mind that there are animals that are triple their size. They're getting the same exact amount of food. So varies per animal. Good question though. Thanks for asking. If you haven't, like and subscribe. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.